It was wow, oh, wow. <laughs> Joey, if I can get that Christmas tea kettle, and if I can serve and Lee a couple cups right there, boy. <laughs> Big Lee, the fart sponge, baby. <laughs> Welcome to Africa, Lee. <laughs> I, normally, I like all your sayings. I don't like the fart sponge. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, but and I'm just joking about that. I didn't mean that. Man. <laughs> I would never say that about. No, you, it's man. funny when the people he, he he's, he's gonna take a liking to it. It's been like two podcasts since he farted on me. Oh, well, dude! In some countries, that's a in Japan, that's like a that's like buying somebody a scarf. No, it's I'm not. Saying, you fart on somebody. You know, I'm half Japanese. I'm there 23 you go. and me. Oh, dude, that's yeah. Why I'm over here farting. Not oh, here. he's got the thighs of a fucking kung fu fighter, son. I'm telling you, dog. Dude, you gotta know different nomenclatures and how to give a <laughs> hug, bro. In Africa, they hit you with a fucking pipe, bro, if they love you. Just take a whiff of that fart. Just I'm not going to take a, take a whiff of your fart. That's Come disgusting. on, bro. Get a little air appetizer, bro. Treat your Look nose. That. that is tremendous. Treat man. your snout to some of that fucking free booty pasta, bro, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. Poor fucking Lee. Lee, man. Dude, it's so funny. You know, sometimes when I, I'm not even joking about when I would need to think about something good, dude, I think about Lee, man. Well, thank you. That means a lot. Yeah, I think about you, man. I think you I just... I think about you to laugh. You, I mean, just the, st the stuff you say randomly. Like, I just want to hang out and, like, listen to what you say during the day to yourself. I just, I feel like it's hysterical. This conversation's getting <laughs> creepy right here already. Well, yeah, you just Lee, farted I, on I, me. How... I, think, I think Lee God might be a little cascadone. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know I what you're talking might, about. Shopping no, you know for closet. peppermint, they call it, dude, yeah, where I'm from. I think from. he's coming out of the closet pretty soon. <sighs> they say, hey, you know, the boy over there, little, little Lawrence. I don't give a fuck if he's... Lee. I don't he's care either, bro. I'll let you yeah, hang off my dick like a fucking mountain cat. No, I would never let Lee something. Like Not that. you guys, but I I don't have the same relationship with him. Yeah, but you're still friends. You can't. I'm friends with him. Lee. I wouldn't fuck him. I would let him touch my dick a little. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Down the, around the holidays, bro? Just to make his day. Oh, he's a prison ham, this guy, bro. I fucking love that boy. Do you know how much money? I told Lee Walker, Walker, Walker Lee one night. Mm -hmm. you know how much money we can make with Lee on the inside. Oh, my God. Just sitting on people's laps. Dealing cards. And rubbing their dick. Yeah. Well, just I'm glad we're bringing this back. You can't just <laughs> sit on someone's lap, but they're not going to let it end at just lap sitting. Bro. Yeah, so they're not in prison because they, 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 they know Gary, how to Gary, Indiana, back. you're an eight, bro. A warm female. In Gary, Indiana, dog, you're oh, a female Gary, eight, baby. Indiana, I got a guy that'll pay ten G's for you to put a wig on. And, oh and yeah, a special type of podcast, and just mug his dick with your fucking neck. He's already written me a letter. <laughs> what does that even mean, mug his dick? <laughs> Lee, you got to get out more. Get off the internet, bro. You got to go hitchhiking, man. I really don't. I don't want to now. You should go hitchhiking later one day as a school project. Yeah, I'm gonna end up dead. No, what school are you in? Are you doing classes online? <laughs> no, I need to be classes here. This is the only. How old are you, Lee? Thirty now. Are you really? Yeah. I thought you were like nineteen, dude. I wish. Are you really thirty years old? Yeah. You're thirty years old. Oh You're my 30. god, bro! My whole perception of you, I thought you were like a, a like a. He you was know, a, he was a college an kid intern. when he first came in here. Oh wow! But look oh, at him now. Now he's a years. fucking young man. That's awesome. Now, now you don't like me as much. You're like, no, I don't. Like no, it's just different. You ever notice when you learn something about somebody you didn't know? You know. Like you see somebody and they're like a lawyer or something, but then you realize they're like a sorcerer or something. Or they do shady shit. Or you see them like ballroom dancing and you're like, this fucking guy ballroom dances? I always that, that always takes my brain a minute. Or if you see a big, big person and they got their stomach stapled and now... Let me tell you something, bro. I miss that. There was a time in this country where if a movie came out, there was an undercurrent. And there wasn't Twitter and there wasn't Facebook and there wasn't social media. But there was an understanding that if you went to see that movie, you were going to see that movie on ass. Wow. Okay, that was it. You know, when we were younger, yeah, we like in the seventh and eighth grade, yeah, we'd get together on a Saturday and we'd get in a bus, the number one bus to Jersey City, and oh. we'd get we'd go behind a fucking alley and we'd smoke ten joints when you're in the seventh grade and mm -hmm. we'd get fucking baked. Oh, yeah. And go in and see the Pink Panther movies or Kentucky Fried movie. There were just movies that there was an undercurrent that you knew you weren't going to see that movie straight. Like, your yeah. dads are going to see straight movies with your fucking family. <laughs> we, yeah, we did that. You know. Rocky Horror Picture Show. That was a popular yeah, one. That that was, that was I did everybody. that later on. Right. But like, you went to see all the rock movies. At that yeah. time, all the theaters had midnight showings of rock movies. 
There wasn't a lot of them. There was ten of them. Yeah. They were all in rotation. Pink Floyd, Live at Pompeii, the song is the same. Neil Young and Crazy Horse, Neil Young uh, with the, the whole crew, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. There were a couple of movies that were hour and a half that you knew you were going to see them yeah. high at midnight on Friday night. And that's what you and 20 of your friends did. But the most vivid movie I still remember going mm -hmm. to see that, it was mandatory that you did acid, was Apocalypse Now. Mm -hmm. Like it was known that you, did, you were not going to see that movie. Based Unless on what? Who told you that? That was the word on the street. Oh, Before the movie even came out, like that was it. We're going to see that on acid. Bro, like, that was it. Everybody's doing acid and going. And like 20 God. of us would go and do fucking acid and I go remember. inside. And we were, oh, you would hear people, oh, it was 3D glasses without the 3D glasses. When they were when they were doing the fucking scenes with the strippers and yeah. shit, that scene blew my mind because they did the redux and they added all the Dutch scenes and shit. This is before all that. Fuck the Dutch. But when bro. they were bombing them with the things, you're tripping your fucking balls off in the movie theater. <sighs> we ate this acid that was double barrel sunshine. And we all went to see. I still remember vividly who I went to see that movie with. Mm -hmm. And what one of the guys did, this guy, John Crowley, was a, there was a Carvel in that mall. This was the Fairview Cinema. The Carvel Cakes with Car ice cream? Yeah, but there was a, a store that gave you the cone. Mm. And somebody went into the movie theater and threw the cone down. And it was melting, and it had a few ants around it, and there was a long line. And he goes, watch, I'll cut in front of the line. And he picked up the fucking ice cream and started, we were all on acid. Oh, yeah. His name was John Crown, and he started eating the ice cream. And everybody in that line fucking froze, and we just walked in like we owned the yes. joint. That's people on acid were fucking eating. <clears throat> no, people on acid were watching my friend eat a, a cone of ice cream that was on melting with ants on it. He picked it up and ate it. You think people were going to fuck with him after that? Mm -hmm. And then, before the movie started, he went up on stage. We dared him. Go ahead. Go up there on stage and tell the people. He was so fucked up on acid. Oh, he went up there. He's like, can I have your attention, please, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? And then people were fucking howling because they had just seen him eat a fucking ice cream cone outside <laughs> with ants on it and shit. <laughs> You know, like I went to all those. Another time, I went to a movie. I went to see ACDC with a friend of mine, Kurt DiLorenzo. God bless his soul. And we got, we did coke that night and, and booze. Oh, and yeah. We drank like blackberry brandy. Mm. But me and him were tight. And one night we pulled the Lee on him. Me, him, and this kid, Louis Castellito, went to a movie. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what movie it was. But on the way home, we were on fucking fire. Yeah. Like the acid was beaming. We were tripping. We were seeing shit. That's crazy, bro. And I think it was Louis Castellino kept saying, guys, I keep hearing sirens. And there were sirens. But I kept telling him, I don't hear no sirens. Damn. And the other dude played along with me. <laughs> He's like, I don't hear no sirens. <laughs> Dude, we, kept, yeah. we kept walking. There must have been a fire somewhere. There's sirens everywhere. And this guy's like, what? I wonder what's going on. Why are there sirens? And we're like, we don't hear no fucking sirens. Knock it off. And it had just rained. Like, when we were in the movie theater, it rained like... <laughs> it rained a ton. And there was a pothole with water on it. Now, we're fucking with him for at least 15 minutes <laughs> about the fucking sirens. He's hitting his ears and shit. He's like, I got to make it stop. I got to make it go away. <laughs> we're fucking howling, me and Kurt. And there's a pothole filled with water. And I'll never forget, he bent over <laughs> and took the water and started coming on his face. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's got he started it, splashing the water on his face. And he kept saying, I still hear the sirens. And we're like, listen, knock it off. There's no fucking sirens. And after about another block of getting tortured, he just took off and ran yeah. off. Yeah, the bro. next day we saw him. He's like, that was fucked up last night. He goes, I went home. I kept hearing sirens. Dude. Oh, my God. We are. That is the Our, best when you take somebody oh, yeah. when he knelt yeah, down yeah. on Kennedy Boulevard dog and splashed water on his face <laughs> from the bottle. I nearly and it was right across from Fairview fucking diner. 
me and George, and there, there was a little hill, so all the water ran into that pothole. Yeah. Oh, nice. There was a couple of inches of water when he bent. The street was still wet. <laughs> but dog, when he bent <laughs> over and splashed water on his face, <laughs> that was the killer right there. I wonder Man, if there's like an like, increase in like mental mental institution like in that from time. acid from just Joey. Oh, just Joey. Like I still got at least that. Yeah. There's a kid who torments me, Chin from Taiwan on Twitter. Oh, I yeah. love Chin. Chin's great. I cracked a tremendous joke out of him yesterday. He goes, Joey, I didn't like what you said. I go, Chin, where the fuck you been driving that fucking lift uh, rickshaw? And then I wrote, I still got it, Cogsler. A lift rickshaw. Get it? Dude, they didn't even. I remember the first time they had an Asian come by us, right? They had a rumor they had an Asian. Um the first one about maybe 17 miles away from us in hammond louisiana right where the train used to pick up and uh and so we were fired up because we'd never seen an asian you know we'd seen you know drawings of them but that was about it and we were like holy shit dude we need to go and we need to see him and so we i remember we cut grass me and two of my buddies probably for six weeks and uh you saved up for a trip to see the asian yeah it was like probably it was about 25 bucks probably to maybe get a taxi over there <laughs> and uh and we got a taxi there and it was just a laundromat it was like a dry cleaners or something no asian we waited there i remember probably four or five hours and uh and then we took a taxi back and that was it man and so i think for a long time i kind of had a um not a feeling of abandonment but I guess I had some sort of a feeling of abandonment when it came mistrust. to Asian people. Yeah, mistrust. Like they let you down a little bit? I don't know if let me down, but just didn't. I don't know. Something. I'd have to think of, think about it more maybe with a therapist, but something like that. <laughs> you, you know? You are you fucking bird. It's good you stop doing drugs. You do know that, right? And we... Uh, Guys like me and you, we, get, we, we hear a natural drum in our head. You understand me? Yeah. And that's bad. You could fuel that drum with marijuana, but all the other shit takes it out of control. Yeah. And then you get mad at Chinese people. And they get <laughs> aggravation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's just a dude in Hammond, Louisiana. What do you expect? 17 knows, miles away. You think you would leave your house if you know white kids were going to smell you? I don't know. I don't know. If you see an Asian, one. you're going to smell him. Right away, you're going to throw him off and smell his neck. It's like how I lease. I always smell Lee's neck. Because I want to smell the hummus coming out of his oh, neck. Yeah, you you going heavy on hummus, dude? Oh, always. I guess, but I, I'm a little bit... Uh, the, the, I don't know what word I should use. I have, I have a little bit of mistrust with Joey now. How often are you smelling my neck? <laughs> when you walk by... I mean, I don't sniff it on purpose. I could smell the hummus leaking out of somewhere. It's got to be your neck or your earlobes. It's got to oh. be something. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, a Puerto Rican moves into your name, but you want to go down there and smell the first Puerto Rican. You want to see why he's different, where you're from, an island. You don't even know where Puerto Rico at. When I was a kid and I met the first Armenian Karnik, yeah. to this day, I don't know where the fuck Armenia is at. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with me. I don't know where the fuck Armenia is at. He's from Armenian Karnik. He's a great dude. It's got nothing to do with me. Yeah, I don't fuck. What am I going to go home and look at the globe for two hours with a microscope? <laughs> I, I need that. I'm 13. I'm trying to find something to fucking occupy my time. No, because that's the way life uh, is. You drinking water I'm ain't going to help you. Him. Oh. Smell that fart. That's a dude. tremendous fucking fart. You guys fart. are like a married couple, dude. No, no one would this say married. This is sex in your they... 60s. This is what sex in your 60s is like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Huffing somebody's fucking booty. <laughs> Huffing, that little... <laughs> Huffing that little booty falcon, bro. <laughs> Look at poor Lee. He's been sniffing farts. He doesn't know that fart's sinking into his t-shirt. Dude, I didn't even tell you, Joey. Rope to you. <laughs> oh, you fucking giving him, huh? You fucking got a whip for that. That bird is hatching, baby, oh, oh, in your you fucking so. brain. He's boy. getting the core of the asshole. Oh. What this poor kid is taking wow, tonight. Dude, that Mother show. Earth right there. I'm sitting here, it's, they're my farts, and I'm thinking of running out of it. Oh, damn, boy, that fart had that breast is, milk oh, yeah. in it, huh? The, the that thing one, is fucking. There's one that's percolating oh, in my damn, asshole right wow. now. That's going to come out like that Korean scent. Oh, know yeah. Saying? That's that fucking lunch animal. And I make it ricochet off the chair. Oh, beautiful. So it, go, it ricochets <laughs> off the nine corner ball and it goes right into his nose. He gets them. Nobody knows how to fart like I've been farting like this for 50 fucking years. Oh, wow. I know how to point my hips. <laughs> yeah. I know how to bank them off the back, the back. I know how to. You oh, know, yeah. Fart, first, You're the Robert Paris of fucking. A fart travels three feet per second. Yeah. 
so I could even bang it off the wall like a like a pool table right here. There's a certain cut that I eliminate Man, the I'm chair. I'm getting hot. Oh yeah, you open the door a little bit. That that's warm air that's coming out of my asshole. It's real. <laughs> oh, yeah, it it's real. That's that. That's how I'm protein. warm is you, dude. Your ass might be really fucking hot. Oh shit! Look at Cleo taking off the shirt and shit. Your fucking ass might Who's be Cleo? Warm in there. Leo, Cleo, <laughs> Theo. I don't fucking know. Come on, man. I Did smoke you... twenty farts. Look. I've inhaled 20 farts and I smoked 20 yeah. bongs. Bro, don't be such a hard, don't be so hard on them, bro. Where I'm from, you get two letters right in somebody's name, that fucking counts, dude. If they don't respond after that. If you get one letter right. I just thought about Cleo. I didn't know. Yeah. When you first started, were you frustrated at one point? Oh, I was fucking angry, dude. Were you dude. frustrated with the system, your life, yeah. yourself? I was frustrated with my life, dude. I was frustrated. I was just angry. You know, I had that kind of like... You know, I had that. I think I had a little bit of that poor white anger. You know, the same type of just. You know, nobody gives a fuck about poor white people in America. It seems like you know, except for poor white people. So, you know, I had a little bit of that angst. You know, I knew dude. I mean, you know, I grew up around some fucking real crazy poor white people. You know, the dude no arm. They had a dude in our town no arms. Used to fucking fight everybody. You know that dude. You know what I'm saying? He'd get you in that lurch. He would catch you with his between his chin and his chest. <laughs> he would fucking snack you like a snake. We were talking about this dude. His had, boy had, Gert was his name. I and he this, would just get you like that, bro. He and he'd no, choke you down. He had no arms. No arms at all. And he'd fight anybody, dude. And he would choke you. He would So if you went to punch him, how would he block? Oh, bro. He'd spin out of it. He'd spin, he'd duck, he'd dodge. The dude had, I mean, he just. And would he catch your hand with his neck? Huh? Would he catch your Oh, neck? he would just lurch at you. And, bro, the thing is, here was the. Oh, you know what? If he hits you with that shoulder, you're going down. Uh, yeah, part of it. The big move was that choke. He would get, he would catch you like this. Where would he catch you? Your hand? In your neck. He would catch you neck to neck. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Oh, once he got you neck to neck, Gert, you, but this whole family, the whole family was fucking... He could choke you out. Psychos, bro. Brother I, had sharpened half of his teeth on one side of his mouth, dude. These people would fuck you up. One of the kids was in a wheelchair, or just... They never taught him to walk, I think. I don't even think he was crippled. They just never taught him to walk. And so the other brother would carry him on his back everywhere, like a backpack, dude. And didn't even give a fuck. Maybe it's good these people are... Are away from society, an entire family. No shirts, bro. Oh Whole my God. family, zero yeah, shirts. No, nobody. Those people don't wear shirts. Not the girl didn't have shirts either. They had one girl in the family. What was her name? Jessica. <laughs> she was normal. She was, you know, she was pretty nice. She, was, I thought she was a sweet girl for as tough as you know everything that had gone on down there. And they used to put a board over the sink at night, and one of them would sleep over the sinks. They had eleven children. I mean, the little, I mean, the house on no joke was two, two of these studios, you know, and they had eleven kids in there. But yeah, it's like I grew up in in that type of environment where it's just like I don't know. You don't feel like anybody gives a fuck about you. So I think a lot. Of, it took a long time for that some of that to get out of my system. I still feel it when I go around like really rich people who think that they know everything. Man, that stuff makes me mad. I fucked around. I want a messenger. Like, you ever go on Facebook Messenger? Mm hmm. I want a messenger just to see because sometimes you, messages accumulate. You don't yeah, know. yeah, you get some in there. I got a message this morning. It was like the weirdest thing. It was like fate. I was telling Lee when I came in. I go, Lee, were you not in the green room with me all weekend? And they go, yeah. I go, Lee, I got an email today from a couple. Yeah. I went to their Facebook page. And I didn't even answer them back. But the first line was, you're a sham. Like a scam, like whatever that word is. Mm -hmm. A farce. A farce or something. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to see you Friday night, and we could visibly tell that you were on cocaine. No. Oh, my God. They were, geni they were like drug geniuses. They had to be Rogan people. When I went back to their page... They had 10 pictures of Rogan. They wow. went to see Rogan like at eight places. They're the ones that always ask Rogan annoying questions on the road. Oh, like, yeah. And Rogan will look at him like, are you fucking crazy? <laughs> oh, I lo There's no better look than when Rogan gives when that Rogan look. When Rogan gives people, you that look. Are you fucking crazy? They, they just <laughs> say stupid shit to Rogan to seem intellectual. And there's 200 people behind your guy. Chit, chit, let's go. Take a yeah. hike. Take the picture and take a fucking hike. Yeah. So you could tell he's one of those guys that he'll see Rogan and right away he called me a farce that i was obviously on cocaine that there was no way that i was clean that my energy levels on stage 
were too high for my age for me to be on cocaine. Mm. He said, but I knew how to hide it. You weren't <laughs> sniffling or wiping your nose. Yeah. <laughs> oh Dog, God. as soon as you do a line of coke, this shit starts dripping out of your fucking oh, nose. Dude. That's the first tell. I could I could look at somebody now. Now I could really see it. Oh, yeah. But then when I was under the influence, mm -hmm. I couldn't see it. Now I could really see it. Dude, everybody, my buddy, this one dude used to put his, he would start to get a little, do a little dust, you know, put, start touching his asshole, bro. By the end of the night, if we had a couple of bags, He'd have four fingers in his fucking ass, dude. He had like a, you know, some of those people eat their hair. You see those videos where people eat their hair, you know? He just had like a weird tick like that where he would just, I don't know what it was. He just like would, under the pants. He would go in the pants. Oh, in his ass, in his own ass. Oh my god. Yeah, I had a guy that used to do this. He would hold up it like he would be talking to you, and he'd go. He would just That's be talking to you and he would just flip yeah, out yeah. time to time. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. And then I had another guy that when he'd get coked up, he was bald. So he always <laughs> felt like something was landing on his head. So every eight minutes he would tell you this shh, shh, and he would look at point to his head to tell you that look, is there a bug do you see it like type but you can oh, see damn. it That's what was like he wants you to be an investigator for him yeah like come yeah. on do I have anything on my head let me know it's like those people that tell you your nose is clean I got anything on my nose yeah. he would look at me I could, he didn't have to say that. he would st <laughs> well, let's say he started snoring at 11 with me yeah by 1 30 that would start he wouldn't get paranoid he wouldn't drive me crazy he wouldn't damn. say a lot of shit he would just tell me that he had a spider on his head. <laughs> and then after two or three hours, he would start smacking his head. Oh, come on, bro. And that's when you would fucking die of laughter. <laughs> when he would smack his own head. Be honest, Joey. After like the first couple of times he asked you, would you just start like looking above his head? Just like, I think there's something on your forehead. Oh, I tortured him for days, that poor bastard. I think he stopped hanging with me because one night he must have smacked himself 90 fucking times oh, for three died. hours. <laughs> He, he was punching himself in the head because I kept telling him, I'm feeling spiders. I tortured. There was like, I've tortured 18 people when they're high. Even when I'm high, I can be fucking stoned. To the oh, game. yeah. The best torture I ever did ever in my 55 year existence was to my ex wife in San Francisco on acid. That was one of the best times I ever had in my life, ever by myself. I kept telling her, get it together, you gotta pick your father up at the airport. Oof. And she was like, my father's coming in? I mean, it was fucking crazy. That's a good one, too. I had her looking for her keys. <laughs> and then I had a Bruce Lee poster, and I would look at it and look at her and go, <laughs> no. don't tell him. No. And she would look at me at the Bruce Lee poster <laughs> no, while dude. I was tormenting her one night. That poor girl. <sighs> you wonder why she hates me with all my fucking heart. I that's got cool. her. That's I so got vague her. and good at the same time. Oh, that's my perfect. God. I got her on one of those 12-hour <sighs> fucking Grateful Dead hits of acid. Mm. For like nine hours, you're just burning. We oh, were yeah. burning. We were burning. It was Fucking 1985. We were burning. Bunch of koalas playing volleyball with your brain, bro. I got it in San Francisco. The first hour and a half is mild, and then it just goes into overdrive. <laughs> and you're seeing shit. You're hearing shit. Yeah. You can't focus on the TV. Only music could be on. Wait, you all right? You feel